and fellow adventurers, welcome to the MinMax Podcast. We want to thank you for joining us, and you do so as we continue the Extinction Curse. We want to invite you, as always, to come check out our Discord, where you can hang out with us and other listeners of the show. If you'd like to throw a little financial support our way, you can check out our new Venmo for one-time tip kinds of things, or you can come join our Patreon. And a shout-out to all of those at our big number level and above. Wolf, Rock Jedi, Blardimus Slump, Emily S, Thunder Mammoth, Jason K, Frank L, Doma Elaka, Just Mike Works, Ross D, and Tree Hugger. New patrons this week, Darren M. And at the big number level, quote the patron forevermore. And moving up to the big number level, one of the rock stars of the Discord, Elisa Ellie. Thank you all for helping keep this show going. And now, a recap of Session 60. We decide to rest for a night at the tower and heal up. The next day, we return to Carrot to prepare for a show. The show goes well. Afterward, Moonlight confronts Opera Vandy with the info we learned and scares the absolute shit out of him. The next day, we prepare to bring the circus to Castanly. On our way, we encounter some truly gargantuan fuck-off spiders. We manage to squish them. There's a pixie guy there, and we pick up as we talk to him about joining the circus. As the circus is congratulating you guys, the fairy that was flying in the road corkscrew flies down to the ground and lands with a flourish on the road in front of you and says, well done! That was quite the impressive spectacle, if I must say so myself. Thank you. It seemed like you were in no danger, but we do need to get through this area. No, no danger at all! It was fun! Also, we have a history of killing spiders. Well, a spider did kill a couple of our troop at one point, so we have a predilection against spiders. Predisposition against spiders. I vendetta. Well, my name is Pin Tingwheelie, Master of the Skies. My goodness, Pin, you seem as though you're a very interesting fellow. And he flies right up to Bernard. Oh! You are fascinating and adorable! Oh, thank you. <laughs> and just cartwheels and flips in the air right in front of Bernard and says, Do you want to watch me fly the show? Watch I absolutely me. do, sir. And he does. He just takes off into the air and he's chuckling and giggling and soaring. And as the as Pin is flying through the air, the professor walks up behind Moonlight and taps Moonlight on the shoulder and says, Quite the performer. Oh, you notice that too. Oh, yes, is bombastic about it. Pin returns and is floating in front of Bernard. Does Bernard like his performance? Oh, very much so. Little rainbow scroll claps. Yes, indeed. Pin says this just overly flamboyant bow that it does to Bernard in the air. You seem to be quite energetic and have a flair for the dramatic. A flair for the dramatic? <laughs> I'm the master of the skies! The flare comes naturally. I'm not saying it is a bad thing. Well, no, it's just an obvious observation. Yes. As we are a circus, we enjoy things that have a flair for the dramatic. Do you ever feel the desire to perform in yes! front of lots of... Okay? <laughs> I accept! Excellent. Except, except what? You're asking me to join your circus, obviously. I'm the master of the skies! We do need somebody to shovel a poop. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Somebody tell the elf that I am not shoveling poop. I fly and I perform. I'm he's a master of the skies. He's not an elf. He's a wizard. Not the master of poop scooping. He'll forget about it soon anyways. I fly. It's not that special. He puts his hands on his hips. <laughs> he looks offended. I will perform for your circus. Okay. And you'll enjoy it. It's as good as your performance here, I would agree. Fantastic! He flies up into the air and does a little cartwheel and corkscrew, and he does another little impromptu performance. Well, we are headed to Castanly. You can join us now or in the near future. Now? Okay, well, hop on in with the rest of them. 
I fly! Yes. So does Miss Dancer. You have another flyer? He looks around. He's a little bigger than you. What? Sometimes he walks. How? He's a Pegasus. <gasps> Where is he? I wave to behind me. And he zips through right past you to go see Miss Dancer. Miss Dancer doesn't know it, but he just got a best friend. Congratulations. <laughs> You've recruited Pin Ting Wheelie. Ping to the surface. Ting Wheelie. Circus. Moonlight looks at the, the professor and goes, Are all of us performers this annoying? It depends on who's being performed for. And also mostly, yes. Pin Ting Wheelie, the world's most entertaining pixie, performs loops and spins and fires colorful arrows to delight and amaze. I love it. He's a level 10 performer. He's got acrobatics and performance check of plus 18. He comes with the aerial, agile, and magical traits. So so we're at the Solwyn Hills right now? You're no, we're just... The, just before the hollows. Just outside the hollows. On your way to Castinley. Okay. Well, through the hollows, I guess, then. What do we know about the hollows? There's a, there's a marker there indicating that it is a place of interest. I thought someone had told us something about the hollows, but maybe not. As you're going through the uh, swampy lowlands that are just outside of the Selwyn Hills, the conversation would come up as you come to the hollows on the map where the crossroads is to go to Caston Lee down farther southeast or to the Liferet Stone southwest. And the professor would go up to Moonlight and ask, uh, Will you be coming with us to Caston Lee or going straight to the tower? Wait, is the life root stone one of the towers? Sorry. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <clears throat> Should we split up, have them go to cast and leave, and go to no. life root stone? <laughs> no. I think we should see you too, cast and Lee. Sounds like their uh, mayor might be difficult. Ah, I, oh, yes, okay. Well, then we shall go together and set up. Do you plan on doing a performance with us first, or...? No, I think it'll probably be more like Carrick, where while you guys set up, we're gonna go check out the stone, the tower. Got it. You're traveling through the hollows here. The road passes through a swampy lowland between the hills and the plains here. It's muddy and furrowed from years of traffic on its soft surface, and standing water forms puddles in the ruts. Willows grow profusely in this area, and between them and the stony outcrops of the rising hills to the north and to the west, there is a shadowy, close quality to the air unlike the bright open feel of the rest of the swordlands. It is as if you have taken a step away from the sunlit fields and villages into a darker and more remote land altogether. The road parallels an iron fence along its north side where the ground rises to a large hillock covered in willows. Spread out in the gloom beneath these trees are limestone and marble tombstones. An open gate in the fence bears an elaborate wrought iron arch bearing the words Castinley Hollows Burying Ground. A track branches off and climbs the hill among the trees and a mournful song comes from that direction. A mournful song? A mournful song. Like somebody singing, or...? Yeah, like somebody singing. Drown it out with fireballs! <laughs> it's, a, it's a singular voice, a baritone, and it's coming from in the hollows, in the graveyard. Can we make out, like, like is it actually singing words, or just, like... Just vowel sounds, long vowel sounds, okay. ahs and oohs, all in a mournful song, no specific words. Do we want to head towards this mysterious singing, or do we want to d d d ignore it? Singing. I feel like it's a plot point or something to do, but at the same time... You will have to come through here again to get to the life root stone. The unless we cross country again. Yeah, the trail. Yeah, the trail parts at this section, so you, you may come back to it. Roll a die. Evens we go. Odds we stay. Wait, you're gonna throw everything we do on the, a chance of a dice? 
Sure. What'd you say? Stay, so. What does that mean? Stay the course? Someone give a speech. We're gonna go investigate and stay here. Well, I'm not sure they want to be disturbed. I feel like we should go check to make sure whoever's making that sound is okay. Yes, it seems quite fascinating. I really want to know what's happening there. Come on, let us go. Says Bernard, obviously. Wait, that was Bernard and not Peach Pie? I, I never would have guessed. <laughs> Are we in a graveyard of sorts? That looks a lot like a graveyard to me. That that would be what Tyler described, yes. A graveyard. I feel like a, I, like maybe twice even. Yeah. Probably. Um, I guess Peach Pie would walk up toward the entrance of the graveyard. Looks like there's a, an open gate here. Uh, hello. 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 You don't get any response. But you still hear the song. I'm just going to slowly take this trail. We slowly start walking through the grave, and I continue to call out, Hello? Hello? Tyler, I am rolling really poorly on a survival check. Are we the most recent people walking through this path? Ooh, good question. No, no, you are not, you are not the most recent travelers of the, uh, the path here. It's soft enough to be able to tell. I'm rolling a stealth check. I get a 23. I am absolutely not attempting to be stealthy. In fact, I'm drawing them away from Swanee's stealthiness and being loud. Yes, yes. I'm aiding I in his stealth. with my clown boots. <laughs> yeah, can I aid? <laughs> can I aid by failing my stealth check? That's the real question. Yeah. <laughs> Turn sure. fucking here? I'm just turtle. giving you the, like, if turtle's coming, is whether you put his token on the, or token on the map. Oh, I, I try to remember every time there's a I was like, oh, I, I guess don't. turtle's staying in camp this time. <laughs> I love that you don't fight. <laughs> like, one of your most powerful abilities that you sunk multiple class roots into. Uh, <laughs> it's great RP. As you travel along the path here and you're seeing all of the graves and uh, the low layer of mist that covers the ground really adds that unnecessary spooky vibe to the whole place. As you're getting around the bend higher up the hill, you see a field of fireflies bouncing, like waving back and forth to the tune of this singing. But when Peach Pie flops up, the fireflies stop as a person who is in an open grave shoveling dirt stops singing and climbs up out of the grave. It's a shuni. You met a couple of these. Yeah. Not very uncommon. I like shunis. I like him too. Was he using a shovel or just digging with his little pawsies? He, he's got a shovel. <laughs> he stands up, he brushes off his trousers, and he tips up a straw hat that he's got on, and he just goes, Clown in the graveyard. Hello? Hello. Hey, guys, there's a dog in the graveyard. I, I believe they are called Shunies, the wizard. I think you know that. I mean, he's, he's part dog. Right. He's a dark person. Well, it's said that Aridin created us. Is is that a, is a, is, is it offensive to call him a dog? Do I know that? I don't know. Society. <laughs> Society check. Is it offensive to call Shuni's dogs? Oh, there's almost 35. Is it offensive to call a Shuni a dog? Uh, let's just let's just assume that uh, it's maybe a little off color. Well, then I wouldn't call him a dog. Then don't. <laughs> We heard you making noise and rather thought it was a ghost. Oh, well, I suppose I could understand that. Are you a ghost? No, no, actually, I'm the gravekeeper for the Hollows. I'm currently awaiting a body. All right, well, have fun. We just stand up by. Back to the circus. But wait, Jeb, uh. there's a map. That means something's <laughs> going to happen. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Who's body? Oh, I'm not sure, actually. Been slower around here these days. 
Most of the bodies go to a hold up of Andy for cremation. Where you've met him. This reminds Jeb that we never buried Derekus. <laughs> so, are you expecting it any time now? Ah, yeah, yes, it, it really any time now. What's it like being a grave digger? He looks around, he shrugs, shovels some holes, sings some songs to pass the time. It's not too bad. Seen anything weird lately? Not really. You know anything about the life root stone? Oh, well, that, that place collapsed some time ago. What do you want to know for? Wait, are, are you telling us it's not there? Well, I mean, it's, you know, a tower that's hundreds of feet tall. It's still mostly there. The upper tiers have collapsed. What are the fireflies doing? They scattered. Oh, I wanted to catch them. You could probably find a stray one. I asked the shuni to sing and bring, summon the, the fireflies. Oh, uh, sure. sure. <clears throat> ooh, uh, ooh. Oh, and weird the, shuni sh- chanting. Yeah, the, like the fireflies come back and they start like dancing in time with it. I start playing the marvelous Calliope. They all scatter immediately. Damn it! I'm playing like, with him. Uh, Turtle gets one on the way out. <laughs> Pounce. Is there another shovel near him? Yeah, yours. Didn't you? Oh, yeah, I've got a thing. I take the shovel and I use my thing that I can do where I make an inanimate object do a simple task for an hour once per day. And I have the shovel help the shuni with his hole. Peach Pie animates a shovel that he has to have it dig. He would say, oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Not much left to it, but any help is appreciated. Well, if you get your body within an hour, it can help you fill the hole. So, I suppose that's rather the easy part. Oh, most certainly. Now, as the shovel's finishing up the hole, Cubby actually comes trotting up the path. Wait, what? Oh, that's right. They're not that far back. They're really not that far behind, though. The circus is at the bottom of the hill. It just came into my head that, like, all the way from the circus, Cubby comes trotting after us, and it's like... Right. It's cu- it's, cu- it's a couple hundred yards, tops. But he comes he comes up, and he just goes, uh, Peach Pie. Yes, Cubby? And there's a man with a coffin who needs us to make way, and one of the wagons is stuck. Could you assist? Oh... Yes, of course. But don't we have horses and oxen and things that are stronger than I am? It needs to be lifted. Oh. On my way. Um, should everybody else come too? Don't split the party. (laughs) Are you asking us or Cubby? Is everybody else coming with me? I certainly am. I suppose there's no reason to linger here. We might as well head out. What was the name of this Shuni again? He never asked his name. Gravedigger Shuni. Gravedigger. What's your name, friend, Gravedigger? Oh, uh, Buralu. Nice to meet you, Buralu. Fuck, there's there's something to do with Buralu. God damn it, I don't remember what it was. We we're supposed to go talk to this guy for some about something. Oh god, let me check my notes. <laughs> we happen across a group of Shunis. Unfortunately, the Shunis get pretty wrecked. Blah, blah, blah. We let's manage to save for the five of them. The survivors promise to come see the show. They mention a cousin named Buralu, who is a singer. Oh. Cubby, I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, uh, then, then I'll be down and I'll let the professor know you're on your, your way. Buralu... Uh, when you turn back to Buralu, he's looking off in the distance to the north, right at the edge of the graves. Okay. Oh, uh, he looks back over to you. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you see that? Points off in the distance. Do, do we see it? Give me a perception check. 31. 29. 30. It looks like what next to one of the willow trees out beyond the last line of graves at the edge of the graveyard here. Looks like it has a tree branch with a candelabra at the end of it. 
I do see that Borello. Boy, that's creepy. Been working here for years, I've never seen anything like that. Is the candle lit? In fact, the only real reason that you can see it, and you assume that there's a candelabra there, but you see the lit candle flames dancing just like a candle flame does. Nothing crazy or unnatural about it, aside from the fact that it's where it's located. And you see it lit, light up down dark looking candles, like maybe like deep violet candles. And they're just standing there. You hear off in that distance, Hello? 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 Yes, you said that already. Can can we help you? Hello? Hello? Perhaps we should get closer. Borello, we are going to investigate this oddity. But I would like to speak with you before we leave. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. He takes a few steps back, looks at your club, looks you up and down. Okay, yes. Yeah, you go check that out. Yes, we are. What is it again that we are, Bernard? Oh, yes, of course. We are heroes, Boo We'll take care of this. All right, then. And I start moving up towards it, the tree and the candelabra. Hello. I keep going. M- Moonlight moves within 60 feet to see if they sense oh, yeah. any spirits. Good thought. Yes. You sense a single spirit coming from that direction. Careful, Peach Pie. There's definitely a spirit or a presence there. Are you malevolent? It doesn't respond. You notice that as you get closer, it doesn't look like there's necessarily a candelabra there. It looks like a human hand with candlesticks coming out of the tips. And this head pops out from behind the trunk of the tree. And this tall, looming, lanky figure with ebony dark skin and long pointing horns steps out from behind the tree. Hello? Dude, that's creepy as shit. Uh, I'll do a check on it. What kind of check you want? After we get into initiative. What the fuck? So imagine, like, Slender Man, but, like, with burned, charred skin, and he's naked and old and has horns and candles for fingers. On one hand. On one hand. This guy's large. Yeah, he's he, oh, and he's large. He's oh, large. Good. He's about uh, twelve feet tall. Well, and as this tall, lanky, disturbingly naked creature steps out from behind the trunk of this willow tree, it moves lightning fast, and it closes the distance on Peach Pie. Fucking clearly, as the creature gets closer, it's holding its fingers out and twitching his candle fingers. You need to give me a will save. I don't like that. Don't like that at all. Well, I get a 26. A 26 will fail. You are fascinated by this creature. Fascinated. You are compelled to focus your attention on something, distracting you from whatever else is going on around you. You take a minus two status penalty to perception and skill checks, and you can't use actions without the co- with the concentrate trait unless they or... Their intended consequences are related to the subject of your fascination, as determined by me, of course. For instance, you might be able to seek and recall knowledge about the subject, but you likely couldn't cast a spell targeting a different creature. This condition ends if a creature uses hostile actions against you or any of your allies. So I can't take hostile actions towards him? Not unless he uses hostile actions against you. Okay. Now that was just an aura. But it also said it unless he uses it against my allies, right? Yeah, it says it says you or your allies, yes. Okay. It will use its second and third actions to quickly flick his candle fingers, and a stream of hot wax sprays in a line, catching Peach Pie and the wizard in that line. I'd just like to say I've had hot wax dripped on me, it's fine. <laughs> 
All right. I also like you... the fact that you described or put the fascinate on him, knowing you were then going to attack him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. It was specifically for the flavor of that particular thing. Peach pie and wizard, give me a reflex save. Oh, my worst save, but generally the least consequential. I get a thirty-two though. Uh, I get a thirty-four. Okay. You both Fucking succeed. Fucking nimble ass wizard. Look at that. Plus nineteen reflex. It's pretty damn good. You both succeed. Neither critically succeed. You get a number of globs of wax that hit you from this line based on your success. You're each hit with 1d2 plus 1 globs of wax. So each glob deals 1d6 persistent fire damage. Again, just going to point out, hot wax, not that bad. Kind of fun. <laughs> Beach Pie has three burning globs of wax stuck to him, and the wizard has two. It's just division stack, does it? For this particular ability, this one does. It is an obvious glob of wax. It has special ways to get rid of it, or that you can get rid of it because it's so specifically just a glob of wax. You can, like, brush it off or something? You can spend an interact action to scrape it off, you or an ally. Per glob or? Per glob. So, that's its turn. That brings us over to Peach Pie, who is obviously no longer fascinated. He took hostile actions against me. He I would have been his friend. Didn't have to go this way, creepy tall naked man. Peach Pie will spend his first action going into a rage. His second action taking a step action toward this man. And rather sadly, because Peach Pie finds this guy fascinating, he will attack him. Oh, I'm sorry, but you shouldn't attack my friends. Oh, that's going to be a 24 to hit and miss. At will miss. Well, that's the end of Peach Pie's turn. Three separate globs of wax burn him for a total of 10 points of persistent fire damage. And I succeed on my flat checks. There, yep, there, there's two successful flat checks in there, a 15 and a 16. Uh, those globs harden prematurely. Really? I, I guess. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's that's what happened. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. Again. <laughs> I did fail on one of them, though. <laughs> yep, one, one glob of wax is still there. That takes us over to the wizard. It's your turn. What kind of recall knowledge do you want for this? This one would be nature. Single action. Uh, 19. 19 will not identify this creature. You have no idea what this thing is. You think it might be a fae of some kind, but you've never seen nor heard of anything like this. Fae typically speak Sylvan, don't they? Typically. I try to speak to it in Sylvan. Say hey. Say hey? Why are you attacking us? It responds to you in Infernal, which I'm assuming you have. I have right? Infernal, yeah. You do have Infernal. It responds to you in Infernal with, Hello! And I was to start attacking again. I respond to it in Shadow Tongue. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Doesn't no. seem to recognize that language. No, no, if I say anything back in Infernal, though, it's still just attacking. It doesn't know anything more in Hello. Nope. It's just coming at Peach Pie. And his hand actually has fire on it? Yep. Little candle flames. David, are you opposed to me attacking you? Um, I mean, it certainly wouldn't be the first time, so, you know, it's it's alright. We, we good, <laughs> wizard. We good. At what point, like, how much damage is, like, the point where you're like, fuck you? Versus, like, okay, like... I think that is a line that has not yet been crossed and I'm willing to see what it is. Let's see if I can cross that line quick. Um, I'm going to (laughs) drain bonded item fifth level. Okay. And recall cone of cold. Oh. Oh, you're betting on him having, like, weaknesses to cold. Well, plus you're on fire. And as (laughs) stuff on fire, like, cone of colds, goodbye persistent damage, I'm assuming. Good. I like it. We need reflex saves, right? Damn. Yeah, reflex saves. It's going to get a 36. I'm going to get a 28. Sorry, Peach Pie. Can I? Oh, that's so many D6s. Yeah, I rolled 46 damage on my 12 D6. And it's cold damage, right? It is cold damage. 
So as that giant cone sprays forth from the wizard's outstretched hand, the force of it and the cold little scrapes of ice hit those candle flames and they flicker and they gut out. And as soon as the flames from the candles on this thing's fingers go out, its hands go directly to its head and it's holding its temples up from either side and it begins screaming like this high-pitched, god-awful catwalling. It takes mental damage from that. Cool. But it's the persistent kind that now has 3d6 mental damage that's applied to it. Oh, shit. Good call, wizard. Good call. You have still not crossed the line. <laughs> Full 46 damage wasn't crossing the line. It's going to be a, it's gonna be a tough I'm, line. I'm pretty certain that that would have easily crossed the line for Moonlight. It, it, <laughs> it would have crossed the line if you hadn't put 3d6 mental damage on him because he doesn't like being called. Yeah, for Moonlight, that's like crossing the line of death, essentially. Well, not anymore. It's like Moonlight kicks me out of the circus. <laughs> I've got almost, almost 200 HP at this point. Moonlight's sitting at 108 right now. Yeah, for so, Moonlight. The lowest out of everybody. But yeah, that's still the lowest out of everyone. I just yeah. took 46 damage, and I still have 20 more HP than Moonlight. That's very true. Then, Wizard, you have one more action left, technically? No, my recall knowledge is an action. Oh, that's right. I, recall, I forgot the recall knowledge. All right, well, then after the Wizard, Moonlight... Sorry, I take that back. We gotta do the persistent damage on the wizard. Nine points of fire damage. And it looks like one of the globs cools and hardens, and that persistent fire effect stops. So both Peach Pie and the wizard each have a glob of wax stuck to them still. Moonlight, it's your turn. So Moonlight will kind of glare at him and be like, It's not very nice to do that. Uh, 28 Intimidation against his Will DC. Will fail. Then nothing happens for that. Okay. At least gives me some kind of idea of what his Will DC, or his Will is, then, or at least a minimum of what his Will is. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking for something that's not Will-based, but apparently everything I have is basically Will-based. So we'll go with the good old try to make it laugh. I need a Will save. We're going to get a 27 on the will save. That's going to fail. It starts laughing. Oh. <laughs> so mechanically, it is slowed one and can't use reactions. Then that brings us over to Jebediah. And around one, it's your turn. Cat pounce. Turtle jump in on this. This whole time, Turtle's been slinking in the trees. Bite. Gets a 33 to hit. <laughs> All right, 33 hits. 18 damage. Turtle gets the uh, sneak attack damage on that one. Yeah. Oh, Turtle strikes again. Oh, yeah, he would be flat-footed because I'm sneaking. So I don't know if you would still get the flat foot after the first attack. Yeah, it's, it's flat-footed for the first one. And it's specific to cat bounce. It remains undetected until after the attack. Oh, after. Oh, so it's helping him. So as part of Cat Pounds, it moves and strikes. So does a 35 crit him? 35? (laughs) No. All right, well, here's just a normal attack. That's second. No, no, okay. And then Jeb will... uh, Andy Jeb knows he's slowed, so I'm just going to go behind him. Be done. Wait, I still can't do that. That's too many actions. Sorry. I'm a cheater. I'm right here. You only have two Yeah, I'm right here. I'm done. Jeb moves up after Turtle pounces and strikes. That brings us back up to the top of the order of round two. The large fey creature who's screaming uses his first two actions. No, he's laughing. And laughing, screaming and laughing. Now this whole situation's odd. And uses his first two actions to cast a spell. It only has two actions. I attack of opportunity it. Good. God damn 27 and god damn this. God damn. Well, it gets the action off. It snaps its fingers and it lights half of his, the candles on his hands, lights them back up. He stops screaming, but now he's laughing. Before you argue about it, <laughs> he's going to strike Peach Pie with a claw. 27 to hit. A 27 will miss. So he swings wildly with a claw and totally 
misses. Woohoo! 28 AC. Five on the dice. Well, it's going to end its turn there. While it's under its vulnerability and after being doused, they are quickened. You actually had it go from four actions. Well, they, they cancel each other out, I think. It is going to take 12 points of persistent mental damage, but it actually shakes it off after taking that damage. Gets an 18 on the recovery roll. That leads us over to Peach Pie. It's your turn. Hell yeah. Peach Pie will just simply, I guess, attack. Why not? We'll start with a 27 and miss. That'll miss. We'll attack again. How about a 33, though? That'll do it. We shall deal the monster 27 damage. And with my third action, I, was, I wanted to use my fun new thing where I can push him, but there'd be no reason for me to push this guy. It's just pointless. <laughs> so <laughs> instead... With, it has reach and you don't. Exactly, exactly. So I think with my third action, we'll just crit fish and fail. Peach Pie is going to take two points of fire damage from that wax glob that's still on him. And I fail my check with a seven. That takes us over to the wizard. It's your turn. Uh, The wizard will use bonded item third level to recall sudden bolt at third level. Drop it on him. All right. Reflex save from him. He gets a 21. That is a failure. (laughs) Shit. 5d12 though. 21. Could have been worse, but... He yeah. takes all 21 damage. And third action, I will move off to the left. Still within 30 feet of him, but I don't want to be in a line with Peach Pie anymore. Then the wizard will also take some persistent fire damage. Take three fire damage. What would you get on your recovery roll? Uh, eight, Bell. That's going to take us over to Moonlight. It's your turn. Throw the digging shovel at him. Here, dig this large fey. I'm going to do a ranged spell attack. I'm going to use my hero point, because that's a net one. That's not much better. (laughs) So my one goes to a six, which makes a 25, which means I miss with my chilling darkness, which I was hoping to deal him some cold damage. So, Uh Well, there it goes. I can't, and my third action will be to sustain my spell, and that will be my turn. Jebediah, it's your turn. I will charge right here we would attack you if you could do it oh too busy laughing it's too busy laughing so i did something this fight oh yeah debuffs i roll to attack him how's a 35 do 35 will hit uh about some damage nice Nice. 27 deeps (laughs) deeps deeps two 11s on those d12s nice rolls The cat will strike out at this candleman. Natural one. Turtle needs more practice. she's desperate. She'll try again. She'll miss again. DM's been leaving her in the fucking circus too many times. (laughs) She's getting rusty. (laughs) Then after Jebediah, we go back up to the top of the order. Round three is its turn. It will take a cautionary step back and begin casting a spell. Jeb, did you take attack round two yet? Wait, I thought he did. Thought he did at the last. I feel moment. like I did too. Let me just double check. Oh, did you? <laughs> I have it. Smack. Twenty nine. There it what? is. Twenty nine is a hit. Sixteen damage. Well, he takes that sixteen damage, and he stepped back cautiously from Peach Pie, who took a swing at him before. And he looks at you with wide eyes and continues casting his spell. He so he's l- still quickened. He's still quickened. Yep. Okay. He casts the flame spell again, and he lights the rest of his fingers. And that's his turn. Takes us over to Peach Pie. Kill him before he gets another one. Since I've seen that he can't make attack of opportunities, and I know what Moonlight's hideous laughter does, I will move around him and get into flanking with my butta Jeb, and we'll make a couple attacks on him. Oh, hell yeah. That's a 39 and a critical. That's critical hit. That's going to be 50. 56 damage. Damn. Wow. Damn, as it steps back to get that uh, that spell off and finish lighting the candles on his hand, he's so frantically focused on getting those candles lit, he doesn't see Peach Pie walk up behind him and crush the back of his head with his mallet. He falls. Oh, I kind of feel bad killing him. He looked like he could be an interesting creature. 
What is he doing here? A very good question, I should think. Buralu walks up, his hand scratching the back of his head. Oh, that, that thing was, was scary. Real scary. And he walks up to Peach Pie and he pries that wax glob that's still hot on your skin. <laughs> pries it off. And he pries the one off of the wizard as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, those things uh, look like they burned. I, I, one got me back here. Are you all right? I mean, yeah, I'm all right. He holds up his arm and you can see a spot where his skin looks red and puffy. Boralo. Yeah? Earlier when you were singing, there were little fireflies making patterns and dancing and things. Oh, yeah. Uh, they really like the singing for some reason. I don't know why. It's gotten in people's heads that there's spirits floating around me while I'm singing. Not true, obviously, but it's cool. Perhaps we might, Moonlight, have a place for someone with such talents? I certainly think we could find something for him to do if he would like to join us. If he does not wish to be a grave digger anymore. Run away to the circus, huh? Well, I mean, I suppose you came to me. I'm not sure if we mentioned it, and it might not be obvious, but we are circus performers. He looks you up and down, and he goes, Yeah, I kind of picked up on that. I heard some rumors. You must be very intuitive. I just like to listen to people. Oh, I suppose I should. we should mention we, we met your cousin. Oh, which one? Clive? No, Donatello. Donatello. I do have a lot of cousins. I don't know if I remember it, Donatello. Clifford? Yes, I believe that was his name. We saved him from some bulettes over towards Matt and Cleve. Oh, those things. Sadly, one of them did die, but... Tragic. But hey, considering how many bulettes there were, just one dying is probably pretty good. Well, after seeing your handiwork, I can imagine you must have had something to do with that. Yes, we distracted them long enough for most of them to run away. He looks you up and down. Well, thank you for that. Very much. What was your name again? I'm Moonlight, the ringleader of the Circus of Wayward Wonders. He puts his hand to his forehead. You're the ringleader. Okay. Yeah, Moonlight taps the staff on the ground a little bit. He looks a little surprised, but he immediately brightens back up. He seems... Like, pleasantly surprised by this. And he goes, you know, I, I mean, Grave Diggin's gotten slow around here recently. A lot of the people just have urns made at Opera Vandy's place. Sure. Sure, yeah, I could use a, I could use a change of scenery. I'll, I'll, I'll join. What do you know about that Opera Vandy guy? Oh, he seems a swell enough fellow. Mm -hmm. Yes, he'd like you to think so, wouldn't he? I don't think I've ever heard anything negative about him. He seems to do just a fine job making sure that all the towns work together. I don't have any complaints. You haven't heard of any suspicious deaths around him? Around him? No. No. Although the man is an undertaker, death is just kind of around him, I suppose. Speaking of suspicious deaths, have you seen any untimely deaths lately? You know, young children or someone that seemed healthy and then passed? Well, it's interesting that you ask that question. You hear the rickety wheels of a wooden cart rolling up the path. There's ah, this is the, uh, the body I was waiting for. So the man that's pulling the cart up the path has a very simple wooden casket. Burelu waves to him. Hey, Clive. And the man rolls up and he goes, Hello, Burelu. Good afternoon to you. He looks over at Peach Pie. Wait, is this his cousin? No, different Clive. Oh. Common name around these parts. Apparently. The man with the, the cart looks up at Peach Pie and he kind of tips his hat to you while he's looking up. He's a shorter man. Good day, clown. Hello. Well, here she is. And Burelu moves and positions around to the backside of the cart and Clive starts working. They both work to lift up the casket, and they go to work. They lower it into the hole. 
And then Burralu starts shoveling dirt on top of the casket there. While Burralu's working, Clive's leaning against the cart, kind of watching him. And he looks over at Peach Pie again. I heard there was a circus in town. Well, you also just passed the circus, so... Yeah, but... Well, the clown is really interesting. Hello. And he looks down at you and he goes, Oh, goodness. Yeah, so Lushy in the circus. Good. Yes. <laughs> he looks a little unnerved, maybe a little uncomfortable. Well, while Boorulu's working, he's going to begin singing again. Clive kind of looks down at, at Moonlight and says, This is my favorite part. And the fireflies show up again and they start dancing patterns around the grave. And it's an oddly peaceful scene. Are you the one that generally delivers the, the deceased? Oh, well, it depends on where they're from. But, yeah, a lot of times I go and pick them up. Who is this one? Ah, this one's a tragedy. Anila. A uh, young orphan teenager who traveled around the Swordlands with her little gang of friends. Picking up odd jobs here and there, but... She had a little hovel. Neighbors found her dead this morning just this morning. Yeah, she seemed fine. Though I heard some people say they were ranting and raving about you guys being in town. Said the freaks shouldn't be in the Swordlands. Uh, not that I agree. I thought freaks was a strong word. She's always been maybe just a little bit of a hateful child, but children don't deserve to die while they're children. That is sad. In your head, Moonlight? You hear, Oh, death isn't always sad, Moonlight. Buck up. And you don't say it aloud. Well, no, it's not always sad, but it is still a child. Clive looks down at you and pops an eyebrow, and then pointedly turns and faces Peach Pie. So, where are you guys performing next? We're going to Castanly. Ah, well, I suppose you were heading in that direction. When's the next show? You gonna go right away tonight when you get there? No, it takes some time to set up the circus. But within a week or so, I should think. Oh, all right. Well, I'll come by and see you. It'll be, it'll be fun. A little entertainment. It'll brighten the mood of this place. Yes, we are very joyous. And my rain cloud turns on. He kind of like puts a hand up to his mouth. He chuckles a little bit. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I see that. <laughs> Bernard pops up an umbrella. I'm not again, not again. Didn't we give him a little magical leaf umbrella? I feel yeah, like. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, magic one, of, leaf. one of Moonlight's leaves. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, Moonlight provides a lot of magical items to this party. Like, random magical... <laughs> sort of magical items. So while Bularoo's singing and filling in the grave, Moonlight's gonna look at this creature, this fae, mm-hmm. just to try to get an idea of what, what it is. They get a do 33 you, nature. Oh, you're gonna do nature check? Okay, okay. Yeah, 33 gets it. This is a an uncommon fae creature. But it's a fae known as a Yaganti. Never heard of it. The Yaganti are lean humanoids with lanky torsos, horned heads, and bulbous black eyes. The elongated fingers of one of their hands are made of candlestick wax, and their fingertips, which have wicks instead of nails, burn endlessly. In the dead of night, the flickering light of a Yaganti's fingertips casts dramatic shadows across their face and highlights their trollish visage. 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 Ah, I almost got you. I was on that. I was on that one, David. <laughs> That's Yaganti. Right. I always used to pronounce the word mirage, myridge, when I read it. In my head. <laughs> yeah. uh, Yaganti fables follow a common formula. A wayward pedestrian traveling at night and usually in a forest follows a distant light with hopes that the lights belong to a fellow wayfarer, only to come face to face with a gangly monster. The story ends in one of three ways. The traveler appeals to the Yaganti with a gift of gold, the Yaganti slays the traveler over some incomprehensible transgression, or even more inexplicably, the Yaganti offers the lost traveler five candles and simple charities so that the light might guide them home. 
Oh, why couldn't we have gotten that one? Yeah, dice rolls. Do I get why he happened to be here? Like, like do they hang around cemeteries or? I mean, it certainly seems appropriate given what you know about their folklore. I mean, it just doesn't seem like people would hang out in cemeteries at night. But I guess it is near near a road ish. <laughs> yeah, you don't really know. This particular creature doesn't really have any home. Uh, most encounters that occur with it happen in forests or in swamplands like this one. Even though this is just kind of low marshy as opposed to a full-blown swamp, places you generally don't find them are in mountainous regions or in very dry climates. I'm going to ask Clive, where did this little girl die? Where was her home? She's got, she actually lives in a hovel outside of Castanley. Okay, going to have to uh, check that out when we get there. All right, do you, anything else you guys want to get done or do while here with Buralu and Clive? Any questions you might want to ask? So, were you going to come with us? Saying this to Buralu? Yeah. I think I will. The grave digging business isn't quite as busy as it used to be with a full blown undertaker and Carrick. And I've been thinking about getting some new sites. Yeah, I will join you. Thank you for the offer. Well, wonderful. You can join us now, or you can meet us in Castanley. We'll be there for at least a week. I'll pack up some of my things and I'll bring a bag. I'll meet you in Castanley. Perfect. See you there. Buralu. He introduces the emotion trait. Ooh, that's Emo- cool. Emotion, magical, and musical. I'll bet the emotion trait would be good for Moonlight. Musical's new too, isn't it? It is. I think, I think musical's, musical's new also. That's okay. neat. Um, emotion. This trick uses alchemical or magical effects to induce a powerful emotional response from the audience. A trick must have either the alchemical or magical trait in order to have the emotion trait. Whenever a performer succeeds or critically succeeds at a trick check with the emotion trait, they can reduce the amount of excitement or anticipation the trick generates, however they wish. You can reduce it? You can reduce excitement or anticipation, or both, if you succeed or critically succeed a trick with the emotion trait. That's weird. Suppose you put that like as the last person to see if you can kind of manipulate and do like a, a critical a, a success. Crit- success. That actually might be a really good idea. Hmm. Then the musical trait is tied to the performance check. The trick involves musical cues or is somehow augmented by sound effects or music. So I think the big one is that it's keyed to the performance check. So Moonlight could add the musical trait. Yeah. Or emotion. Or emotion. Emotion Emotion might even be a better idea. Because Moonlight's got magical art is the second one that Moonlight added was magical. That's true. And actually, I don't think you can add a third trait until... Yeah, you can't do it yet. It's a while before we can do a third one, I think. Because the next one is like third trick or something, or third Yeah, level level 12 is three trick traits. So yeah, Mm. it's actually the next one. That's the last trick traits you get to increase until 20th level. 20th level gives you four trick traits. After all of this conversation has happened, Peach Pie will finally go back with Cubby and uh, help to free the stuck wagon. So it's it's a relatively short trek from the Hollows to Cast Inlay. It's about five miles. You're moving away from the Solwyn Hills as you're going east toward Cast Inlay. Castanley is not a... It's a its a prominent farming center for the Swordlands. It looks like there might be a couple of thousand people that would live in and around Castanley, and there's a lot of farmland that you're passing. Does anybody greet us? I mean, the last time we got to... The, when we got to the last place, like, Opera Vandy was, like, there, ready to go. As you roll into Castanley, definitely there are children who end up following the train into town. There's some milling about in the market, and as you get into town, it kind of stops, and everybody looks at all of the animals who are being let in, all the colorful characters, and everybody just kind of watches you enter town. Nobody necessarily comes out to greet you, though, either. What? 
What's this? A somewhat cold reception to the Circus of Wayward Wonders? Clearly they have not yet heard of our brilliance. Will we be able to put on a show, solve all their problems, and become folk heroes of legend? Find out next time as we continue The Extinction Curse. And until then, may you have many great adventures of your own. It's your turn.